Hello. Welcome to the Vibrant Living Expo and Culinary Showcase here on the beautiful Mendocino coast of Northern California. We're really happy uh, today to welcome the filmmaker Deborah Coons Garcia and her beautiful film, The Future, <coughs> the Future of Food. Um, many of you may have already seen it, and those of you who have not seen it are going to be in for an amazing experience. So I'm going to allow, before further ado, to um, have Deborah go ahead and introduce her film. Um, she's very knowledgeable on the subject of gen genetically modified uh, crops and government policies and globalization and all of the things that we need to be thinking about right now at this time. So Deborah, please come up and welcome to um, our event. Thank you. You're welcome. This is great. Um, I can't wait to eat all the food that's out there. It's kind of sorry I had breakfast already. Um, but I just want to say that this film came out five years ago, so it's it's been around. And um, but what's interesting is it's it's as popular as ever. It's actually was very well well received when it came out, and it's still being shown all over the world. And we still get emails every day from people thanking us and telling us that they've changed, you know, how they eat and they've changed how they see the world. And and it's 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 really interesting. I was in Ohio visiting my mother and. Um, I met one of her, through her I met this man and he, he well, I, you know, we're looking over my mother's like little tiny stock portfolio and she had Monsanto stock, you know, so I'm like, Nyeh. I said to the guy, oh, Monsanto stock. And he said, yeah. And I said, I, you know, I'm kind of, I wonder, you know, it might be nice to kind of get rid of the Monsanto stock, even though it's performed really well because of, you know, the, well, how they operate. And he said, but don't you think that's really good because the genetically engineered seeds are going to save the world and feed the world and don't we really need this? And I said, eh, you know, <laughs> totally wrong. <laughs> and so I told him, you know, he should go to thefutureoffood.com and order my film and watch it. Because there still is this, these two um, competing versions of how we're going to move into the future. And one of them is the high-tech fixes. And the other one is actually... Uh, it is technological in that you use techniques to farm organically and feed people. So you, it's actually very highly skilled work, but it's not the high-tech fix that the corporations are still trying to shove down people's throats. So um, one of the good things about this film is that it explains how genetic engineering works and how the system of patenting life works. And, and to me, that's really important because once people understand it, then, you know, once they've understood it, then they they kind of have to change the way they see things and how they eat and how they shop. And I think, to me, rather than making a statement and expecting it to be taken on faith, that it's important that we all understand how, how these systems work. And that I think that's em empowerment. And that's the great thing about a film is you can spend three years crystallizing the information so people can get it in 90 minutes. And so that's what's fun for me to do. So so we're going to see this, and then I'll come back and do a Q&A, and then I'm going to show a little 13-minute uh, short from a film I'm working on now about soil, which is really fun, called In Good Heart. And that's also, um, we'll see that after that. It's kind of, uh, since the future of food was so well-received, I wanted to do something that was in the same universe um, that empowered people to understand stuff and so could change the way they, they act. So... There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Sweet. Any questions or comments? Um, probably next spring, this coming spring, yeah. I mean, that, this is just from it. This, this won't be in the film. This is its own separate film, but it's about soil and a lot about soil science and all that. Uh, well, a lot of it is going to be about what goes on in soil separate from agriculture, just soil itself, and how it's formed and its uses, you know, in the ecosystem. And, um, and then there'll be a part on agriculture, too. How you build the soil. How you build it and just, I don't know, everything that goes on in it, and different kinds of soil and nutrient cycling and... And one of the things I want to get into is the nutrients, you know, the, how nutrients get in the soil. You know, they come from rocks or volcan volcanic rock. And then they go into the soil and then they come in the plants and then they come to us. And so 
soil that doesn't have the right nutrient, you know, that doesn't have enough nutrients because they've, it's been depleted, then that does affect our health. And there's been some research on that. So, but if originally it was going to be a lot about agriculture, but as I've gotten more and more into it, it's kind of interesting to see all that other stuff that I think just helps create a sense of, of wonder about this planet and this miracle that we actually are here, that we came up out of the soil and that there's this very thin layer, you know, six inches, 18 inches, whatever, six feet that are supporting us. You know, it's, it's really pretty fragile. It's pretty amazing that we're here and it's, it's very fragile. And if we abuse our soil, then, you know, it's, it's not going to, that's not good. And that we are, you know, we're losing soil. So it's, hopefully it will make people just appreciate you know, and and have a sense of uh, reverence for the earth. I'm excited that you're doing this. This is the next film. Yeah. I'm really excited. It seems it's perfect for me. Yeah, it's going to be really good. It's actually turning out really, really well. I mean, it's it's uh, we've we've shot in um, well the United States. And we've shot a lot of the top soil scientists working today, and we've shot in India and the UK and Egypt and Hawaii, and so it's. Are you still we're, we've pretty much shot it all. We have some uh, things we're going to shoot, different kinds of soil. But most of it's been shot, yeah. yeah. So you're we're going to... I'll be here for a little while, yeah. We're wandering around and eating. eating. <laughs> Good. Yes? Um, do you uh, know which is better, like composting, rock dust, or ocean water? There seems to be a lot of like, talk about what's best for the soil. I think it depends on the kind of soil that you're treating and the environment that it's in. And you can do things like, for example, this, uh, this guy's soil in Wales, which is pretty cold and damp there. You know, if you had that much compost in California soil, my understanding is the compost would heat it up too much maybe if you had that, if you had that high of an organic matter. So I think it depends a lot on the climate and what you've got in your soil. But almost, I mean, uh, organic matter is what we've been taking out of the soil. I mean, the, the whole thing about soil is when something in, in nature when something grows, it, it basically returns itself to the earth. So it's a pretty, you know, they get a lot of those nutrients. But when you take it off, when you take plants off, you take it out, then those nutrients aren't able, they're, they're removed from the soil, from that cycle. And so you have to replace those somehow if you want to have healthy soil. And compost is a way to do it. And just, you know, green manure, just the plants, letting plants grow and putting it back in is a way to do it. But a lot of it just depends on what kind of soil you start with and what's been taken out of it and what that climate is. Because even water, if you water something too much, you're draining all the nutrients out of it. So it's it's very, it's incredibly complex. You know, if I'd known how complex it was before I started the film, probably wouldn't have started the film. <laughs> but I'm in it now. So it, but it, it that's one of the things that, um, but I think the main thing is that you have to give back to the soil. You can't just take, it's just like, almost like a metaphor for society now, to my mind, is you can't just take, 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 and expect to be living in a healthy, functioning system. You have to give back. And I think that the soil is giving us that big lesson now. And and also just the diminished nutrients people get from soil that's dead. I mean, we, we filmed um, up in Napa Valley <coughs> a guy who dry farms up there organically, and it was interesting because a lot of people complain that California wine is too alcoholic, you know, because it's maybe a couple percentages higher than most wines. And some people don't drink it anymore because it's too alcoholic and they get, you know, more hangover from it. So I was talking to him about that and he said, normally grapes were dry farmed traditionally, you know, in the Mediterranean. And when you, when you irrigate, um, the grapes get too much water in them and then they don't get as much taste, and then you know what, you have to leave them on the vine longer, which creates higher sugar, but it doesn't necessarily create better taste, and so then when you harvest those, you have to do all these things to them, all these like high-tech processes to get the wine, where if it's, if it's dry farmed, then it gets all this um, taste and nutrients because you're not diluting it with the water, and so you don't have to leave them on the vine longer, you can just let them you pick them when you when they're ready, and you don't have to do all these things to them. So dry farmed grapes have wine has less alcohol. But so that's 
you know, this whole thing, which I didn't realize, it's, that's how you treat the soil. And he was up there and he was showing us his soil, which when you dry farm grapes, because, you know, it doesn't rain in California if all the whole time grapes are growing, it doesn't rain. So you have to develop the soil so it holds the moisture and it is deep soil and rich soil. So you have to have much out of your soil if you're going to dry farm grapes. And if you don't, so he showed us his, his soil, which was an organism. You know, it's a living organism. And then he, we went to a place that is not organic and doesn't dry farm, that irrigates. And the soil was just dead. You could just see the difference. And then he takes his shovel and he goes, kank, kank, kank. You know, he goes, this is not an organism. You know, so that idea that soil is an organism, that it's alive, you know, and that we're part of it, we're part of the soil community, I think is a, is a really important lesson that we need to think about and, you know, honor that. But it's very complex. That's why people spend decades trying to figure out what the right treatment is for their soil. But I also think it gets very simple. Like the farmers were saying in the film, they used to do all this stuff to their soil, but once they um, got a healthy system going, they didn't have to bring in all this stuff. And the rock, you know, it depends on whether your soil is lacking in minerals or whether it's lacking in organic matter, you know, which are two different things, you know, and whether the minerals will help the organic matter get going. So it's, it's pretty complex, and that's why every organic farmer I know, like the, a friend of mine was telling me he go, visits a lot of these farms, and he said lots of different, all kinds of farms. And he said that, you know, when he goes to a non-organic farm and talks to the farmer, they're talking about um, their yield and they're talking about their, the chemicals they put on and the machinery they have and who they're selling to. You know, they're talking about all this stuff. And when he goes to talk to an organic farmer, they always talk about their soil. They just talk about their soil. That's all they want to talk about. And so there are these two really different ways of thinking about agriculture themselves. So. And, Yeah. I don't know. I bet the USDA has something. The extension center will do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, they can go to their, your local extension and find out. Anything else? Thank you. Thank You're welcome. Thank you. Always ring the bell when I'm wondering if the if the workers in the restaurants are being treated with kindness. Okay? Yeah, I'm serious. I'm serious. I, I, you don't have to literally do, do that, but I mean, something that demands that in your presence you're adhering to a higher standard of living. That's that's again the same uh, energy of the gratitude. But here's why it doesn't work. Word, commitment. If you are the type of person that keeps your word, okay, and you do so consistently, just try it for two weeks. You don't know. If you, don't, if you do not constantly do battle with the ego that says, it's okay to say I'm going to be there at 8 o'clock on Friday night and you mosey in at 1030. Do you know how many people, if they're waiting for you, are not happy with you? Okay. Do you know how you're not happy because you're rushing? And then guess what? It's, a, it's 7.45. You're uptown. You have to get down to the village. And you can't get a cab because suddenly you weren't expecting the temperature to drop.